Hi, I'm Nina, and welcome to the first lesson of our Design Your First Sweater class. This lesson is going to be about swatching, measuring your gauge, and calculating the measurements for your finished sweater. It will not require a lot of math, and all of the math necessary is in fill-in-the-blank uh, items on the worksheet attached to this blog post. Um, I'm assuming that since we all know how to knit, everyone also knows how to swatch. A swatch is basically just a square or a series of squares of plain knitting in the stitch pattern that you plan to use for your sweater on a variety of needle sizes so that you can decide whether you like the fabric and which needle size you're going to use. Um, if you've picked your yarn out for your project already, then you'll want to swatch it, I would say, on at least three sizes of needles. Um, if you haven't picked your yarn out, then this is a good chance to narrow down the contenders, try swatching with, with each of them, see what kind of fabric you get, and also see which ones you enjoy working with. Sometimes the yarn that looked really attractive in the ball is not actually that fun to knit with, uh, and that's something that you'd rather know now than before buying 12 balls and starting to make a sweater out of it. Um, I have a few notes about swatching. You can, As you can see, I had chosen my yarn before we before we shot this video, and I've done my swatch. This is a worsted weight super wash wool, which I swatched on three different needle sizes. This is a US 5. I like to put these little eyelets in there so I can tell what needle I used if I forget to write it down. Uh, this one was a US 6, and this one was a US 7. Um, different needle sizes can sometimes uh, different needle sizes will affect your gauge, but also different needle materials can affect your gauge. So some people will find that using the same size needles, one in wood and one in metal, they'll get slightly different gauges. So it's a good thing to note which material you've used if you have more than one to choose from. Um, I did the first swatch in our Harmony Wood Needles, the second in our Zephyr Acrylics, and the third in our Nickel Plated options, just so that I could get a feel of which ones I like to work with the best. Um, I personally like acrylic needles, but they are known to sometimes interact with fibers in a way that's not pleasant, like a super wash wool or an acrylic blend especially can sometimes have a little squeak on them that people find really annoying. So these are things that you would like to figure out during the swatching process so that you can always have the most comfortable knitting experience possible. Um, different fibers are going to affect your finished fabric, as we discussed a little bit in the first lesson. Um, I'm using a super wash wool, which doesn't, as we touched on before, it does not have memory uh, and tends to sag and stretch out a little bit. So I swatched on smaller needles than I would probably use for a regular wool. Um, worsted, I typically knit worsted on a seven or eight needle. Uh, and I swatched with seven, six, and five for the superwash because I want to make sure that my sweater has enough structure and doesn't turn totally flaccid and loose after it comes off of the needles. Um, other fibers to think about this with certainly are silk and alpaca. These are two of the biggest offenders in my experience for getting loose and droopy after they're knit. So you might want to go down a needle size when you swatch, see if you can get a, fine, a firmer fabric and see if you get something that you like better than the needle size you would typically use for that weight of yarn. Um, definitely you want to use a method of like labeling your swatches, especially if you don't do them all in one strip like I did. Uh, either write it down on a piece of paper, attach a tag, or use the eyelets trick. It also works to do purl stitches instead of eyelets, just so that when you come back later you know which one you used on which, because when you measure your gauge you want to be able to reproduce that in your finished item, and if you don't know what needle size you used, then it's a little bit of a crapshoot. Um, if you're using cotton or a cotton blend or any machine washable wool, uh, any machine washable fiber, Keep in mind that they're known to shrink in the wash, uh, especially lengthwise. Cotton is especially, uh, is especially known for this. So it is really important to use a needle size that's comfortable to knit with, but it's also really important to get a gauge that's going to work in your finished garment. If you knit your cotton at a really tight gauge and then wash and it shrinks even more, you're going to end up having to do a lot of knitting, it's going to 
potentially hurt your wrists to knit the cotton so tightly in the long run and you're going to end up with a garment that feels like armor. So if you're working with cotton or something that's known to shrink in the wash, knit it more loosely than you would expect to at this stage because you are going to wash your swatch to get your true gauge when you're done with this. Um, I, I put in our, in our notes for this class that you should wa knit your swatch over a reasonable number of stitches, which is a pretty slippery comment and I apologize for it. Um, generally, you want your swatch to be better than four inches wide. Uh, I think mine is a little bit better than six inches wide. It's curling, so it's hard to see, but on the biggest needles, I'm at about seven inches here. It's gonna seem like a lot of work to do such wide swatches, but it really does give you a more accurate picture of what kind of fabric you can expect, and it means less unpleasant surprises later down the line. So I definitely recommend making your swatch at least six inches across. Uh, depending on the weight of yarn, <clears throat> if you're knitting with fingering weight, that'll mean approximately 48 stitches to cast on, 42 stitches for sport weight, 36 stitches for double knitting or DK weight, <clears throat> 30 stitches for worsted weight, and 24 stitches for bulky weight. These are okay guidelines, so if you wanna just cast on that number with your weight and jump right in, it's fine with me, it should work. If it doesn't, then you're extremely tight or an extremely loose knitter and you should change needle sizes. Um, I always start the swatch with a few rows of garter stitch. This just keeps the ends from curling. Uh, and usually I keep a few stitches on the edges in garter stitch as well. You can see that I didn't do that this time and obviously, I guess it's not that important, but it can make for a neater swatch that's easier to measure because you don't have to force it to lie flat all the time. Um, using, when you bind off your swatch, you do wanna use a stretchy bind off. Um, this is my cast on edge and this is my bound off edge. If you use the traditional bind off where you do knit one and then pass, a, pass the stitches over all the way down the row, it's extremely rigid and it can, um, it can make the end of your swatch pull in and seem tighter than it actually is. So use the stretchiest bind off you know. I have a few references in the handout uh, that you can go to for that if you don't know any others. 